Whenever you think of archer commanders, especially legendary ones, I'm sure that two really come to mind. Herman Prime and maybe more importantly, Zulang, the arguably strongest archer commander in the game. And in today's video, I'll be remaking my in-depth guide for Zulang for your best pairings, your best skills, your best talents, his best equipment, and is he actually still worth investing in in 2024? So if you're interested in Zulang, if he's a good commander and what skills you need for him, you definitely want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's start off today's video as we always do by going over Zulang's skills and we'll start off with his active skill. And I mean his active skill is just really strong. He deals a 5 target AoE to people in a circular area with a damage factor of 2000. Every single target reduces that damage by 15% which is a given and troops hit by this skill deal 15% less damage for 3 seconds. This is a 15% all damage reduction. I mean this is just an insane active skill. The highest 5 target AoE damage besides that of Lao Che who does do smite damage and they seem to get slightly higher damage numbers because there aren't as many boosts to normal damage in the game than there are to skill damage. So Zhu Lang, I mean, straight off the bat, arguably has one of, if not the best active skills in the game, with an insane debuff. I think the debuff just makes it a little bit more strong than Lao Che's active skill. Granted, Lao Che does have smart damage, which has its own benefits. So I think Zhu Lang, one of the best active skills in the game, and this is definitely one of the best five target AoEs, and it is the best circle AoE in the game. So definitely a very powerful active skill. His second skill here, you get... 30% archer health, and you deal 5% more all damage for archer units. I mean, this is just great. I mean, the archer health there is amazing. Not many archer commanders give health, and very few modern commanders really give health for archers. Out of the recent commanders, we know that Herman, Boudicca, Henry don't actually give health. Zhu Lang and Ashur Bani Pal are the only two which can give health, and Ashur Bani Pal is based on luck. So Zhu Lang is the only real commander who can give you consistent archer health out of the most recent commanders which is just an amazing thing to have, and the 5% all, all damage increase is also nice. Also, when he's on the map, whenever he's inflicted with a control effect, 50% chance to negate the effect and deal some damage to the target that gave you that effect. Honestly, this used to be better when Guan was a little bit more meta, especially when Zulang was first released. Nowadays, it's not as important, but with a few more range commanders out in the open field and stuff like that, he is kind of getting a little bit of value from that extra piece right there on his second skill, but it's not really too important right now. There aren't really any key commanders at the moment besides the ranged ones with silence, disarm, and not really any commanders of heal immune, so they're pretty much useless additions right there. It's a small thing, makes him okay against Guans, but it's not as necessary as it used to be. As for Zulang's third skill, this skill is another stat skill. Whenever he's using only archer units, he gains a 20% boost to skill damage. I mean, this is really nice boosting your skill damage, especially with a commander that's already dealing really high skill damage. Being able to boost that more, really nice with an AoE. He also, whenever he launches a basic attack, has a 10% chance to gain 50% attack for 3 seconds, cooldown of 5 seconds. Once again, pretty nice thing to have right there. And the thing that the cooldown is less than 10 seconds means that if you're lucky, you will get a few more triggers on that skill, which is once again pretty nice. So this skill... Decent overall, nice to have the skill damage bonuses there, and getting yourself the extra chance to deal the attack there is also nice. It can allow you to get some pretty good white numbers or even just some pretty good active skill damage if it does line up correctly. Moving on to Yu Lang's fourth skill, this is where his kit becomes a little bit more complicated, and this is when we start to see his Marquee effect. Whenever this commander's trip uses an active skill, if he does not already have the Marquee effect, he gains that effect for 10 seconds, dealing, increasing his all damage dealt by 10%. If he already has the marquee effect though and consists of only archer units, he will dispel that effect, which means he will get rid of it, and he will deal direct damage to up to 3 enemy troops with a damage factor of 1500, but this is not affected by skill damage buffs. And this may seem at first like it's not that good, I mean, the all damage is really nice, obviously, but the marquee effect itself doesn't seem too important, and with the damage factor not dealing extra damage to enemy units, you may think you need at least two skill cycles to really get value from it. That being said though, one key thing about this damage factor is that there is no reduction on it. It doesn't say there's a reduction, and usually if there is a reduction, Lilith will mention that specifically. I mean, even with Herman Prime, who only has 300 damage factor, sorry, 200 damage factor, they mention the reduction, but clearly they're not mentioning it on Zulang for a specific reason, and that's because there is no reduction. 
because it's not affected by a skill damage buff, so you can't really take this to an insane level. So for that reason, really, Zulang's fawn skill is pretty good. Not only do you get access to a marquee effect, which is great being able to increase your damage dealt by 10%, but you're also getting basically almost a second active skill there. I mean, if this was an active skill back in the day, like a few, maybe a few years ago, 1,500 damage to three enemy troops is pretty good. I'm pretty sure that's literally the damage factor of William on a commander basically by themselves. I think William might even have less damage if that. He has actually got exactly 1,500 damage to three enemy troops, and I'm pretty sure Zulang is in a fan-shaped area. So that's definitely a very, very nice extra skill to have there. And the only problem with it you'll notice is really that you need to get two skill cycles going before you can get this marquee effect to deal the extra damage. But when we look at Zulang's expertise, this is where that changes. When he expertise Zulang upon entering combat, he instantly gains the marquee effect, increasing his all damage dealt by 10%. For 15 seconds. This means that whenever he uses his active skill, since he already has a marquee effect, he's going to dispel that effect and instantly get access to this extra damage factor here, the extra 1,500 damage. And the good thing is you get an extra five seconds to get this done. So if you want to switch targets midway through, it's definitely much easier now instead of the 10 second timer, which really you have to stick onto one target to get the extra damage here. So Zulang's expertise, really good just for getting that instant marquee effect, makes him very good for city popping, makes him really, really good for fighting on the open field, since you can leave combat and come back in and pretty much be already fully ramped up. Also, an extra bonus, whenever he deals damage with the burning of his nye, which I probably butchered, that's his active skill, or whenever he deals damage with the marquee effect, or also his other skill, I think it's actually this skill right here, he will gain a 30 rage. I mean, that's nothing too crazy, but it is a nice bit of rage to get, and it's just an extra bonus on the expertise, but really you're there for the marquee effect, which is probably the strongest part of his kit once you add his expertise in, because active skills, I mean, they're going to fall off eventually, there's going to be more commanders with them, but something unique like this, or at least something strong like this, isn't going to be replaced as quickly. So now, as for your Lang's best skills, I think that you've got really two options, or maybe three. Back when he first released, 5511 was perfectly good, and I still think it's reasonable nowadays, when you first unlock Zulang to just use him at 5511 as you work towards his other skills. But after that, the only two options you have are 5551 or you go all in on expertise. There's no point in going like 5515 like I initially recommended because over the year when I've used him and I've noticed a few things, the marquee effect isn't useful until you get his expertise. I use Zulang on expertise for about half a KVK and you don't really get to notice that marquee effect unless you're really good at rage chaining and you get really lucky with hitting targets. So until you get that expertise, this fourth skill is not as strong. So a lot of people say, why don't I go 5515 to use the extra damage here? You just don't really get to use it on the open field until you get that expertise. So 5551 is very, very good with Zulang. And then you want to move towards expertise. Here's a commander that's worth the expertise. It's definitely giving him a very good bonus. But once again, it's not essential. Though unlike Herman and Budokan, where their expertise is really not that big of a deal. Zulang's makes a pretty big impact on his kit and it's definitely worth going for. So if you're gonna go for Zulang, I recommend just going all in on the expertise, but eventually you could use him at 5511 and then you take him up to 5551 and then you take him all the way up to expertise. That's really the order you'd probably go with to get the most value out of him. And it's a really easy order. You don't even need to use, or you don't even have to use any skill resets. There's just no chance of skills going in the wrong spot if you just skill lock him into the right section. So definitely nice skills right there, just in order, all the way up to his expertise. Now, as for Zhu Lang's top pairings, I mean, he's really got three main pairs nowadays, and I'll just go over them really quickly. I mean, Herman Prime is easily his best pairing, using Zhu Lang as the primary in this situation, and then Herman as a secondary. You get a commander with really good AoE, you've got really, really good debuffs on the Herman Prime here, and because Herman has a support tree and Zhu Lang instead has the skill tree, you get all the good rage cycle benefits from Zhu Lang, and you get Herman with his extremely amazing debuff that also really amplifies AoE commanders. So you couldn't go wrong with a Herman and a Zulang. It's a really all-round good march. And Herman's bring stuff like defense and march speed, which are really lacking in Zulang's kit. So Herman's probably his best pair nowadays. Actually, not probably. It's definitely his best pair nowadays. And it's just all-round really strong. And it's definitely the strongest archer pair if not the strongest commander pairing in the game at the moment. Another great pairing for Zulang is Henry V, and the reason Henry is really, really good, and arguably I'd say Zulang's second best pairing, is just because when we look at pure trading-wise, 
Henry is an extremely tanky commander. He's got all that. Da- he's got revenge damage. Sorry, he's got a really good expertise that once again reduces the damage he takes. And he's got stuff like March Speed outside of Alliance territory. So Henry, really, really powerful commander who's extremely tanky. And that's just going to synergize really well with Zhu Lang. Once again, you use Zhu Lang as the primary here. Because while Henry is a really scary commander to see as a primary, he is not as good in terms of initial rage cycles than the skill tree is on Zhu Lang. And I really am a big fan of the skill tree. If you watch my channel, you would know that. So Henry, use him as the secondary to Zhu Lang, and then you would just run the Zhu Lang Henry, and it's a really, really good march. The final pair I'll really mention that's a key pairing, it's probably Brutica Prime. She's just got really all-round good stuff. She's got a good debuff. She's got pretty decent march speed, and she's got a few things that can make her a bit tanky, like a skill damage reduction. And she's also got another way to remove control effects. Once again, not that important, but it's still a nice thing to have. So Boudicca Zulang used to be one of the best pairings for him and is still now a really solid pairing. Honorable mentions, I mean, you've got a Shabani Pile and Nebu. They kind of function the same with Zulang. And then you've just got some older commanders like YSG who work with Zulang, or even commanders like Thutmose who can initially work with him, but that's really most archer commanders. So Zulang's best pairings in order, it's Herman, then Henry, then Boudicca, and then maybe like YSG. Those would be, in order, his best pairings. As for a talent build on Zulang, I mean, this is probably the only build you'll use for him. It's just as good as it comes. You've got up to Venomous Thing here, dealing extra skill damage. You also grab Razor Sharp for more rage. And you also grab Arrows Nooked and Rapid Fire from the Archer Tree. And then you just go all the way to Feral Nature and you pick up Naked Rage as well. This is probably his best way to go. You're getting 100 rage every now and again, which is really good for an initial skill cycle. And this Naked Rage for a commander who's dealing such high AoE like Zhu Lang, especially if he is with Herman, is worth it. Because you're going to deal more damage than you take often, especially if you're able to play a little bit aggressive. If you find that you're getting too much damage from other people's AoE, you can drop Naked Rage and put the points elsewhere, maybe into forms such as Arrows Nooked or just going a little bit further into the Archer Tree for a few more stats. So that's really the only time I'd drop the Naked Rage. Here's a build that would more look into the Archer Tree. I mean, you've just gone all in on the Archer Tree. You've gone up to Rejuvenate, and you put a few extra points down into the Health for Archer units over here. This isn't the best build, but this is another build. If you're not a fan of Feral Nature and you find it doesn't work for you, I would go with something like this. There is one more talent point I might just put into probably here. No, I did the same thing. So something like this is probably your best route. Actually, put the point in full quiver. Don't put it here. This is what I would run for a Zulang, really. If you don't want the skill tree, but I think this is his best build, and this is the one I personally do use. Now, as for accessories on Zulang, I mean, really, you're not going to run any of these major debuff accessories because he's just too slow. So the only real options you've got, you've got the Ring of Doom, you've got the Horn of Fury, and you've got the Kurax War Drums. I think Zulang is not tanky enough to justify putting Kurax War Drums, because if he goes down, then your whole rage goes down for your murder ball. So his best accessories are just Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury, because he's not very fast, he's more there for the damage, and these two accessories are really good for a damage-heavy commander. Even if you go in skill tree, I think Horn of Fury is still worth it, once again, for those chances of increasing your rage, and you'll rarely find it that the Horn of Fury lines up exactly with Feral Nature. It may happen once every blue moon, but still, I would say Horn of Fury gives enough value to the point where it's worth having on a commander, even if they go into the Feral Nature and have a little bit of rage gain in their own kit. So Horn of Fury, good with Zulang, and I mean, Ring of Doom is just tried and true, one of the best accessories in the game with really, really good all damage bonuses. So Ring of Doom and Horn of Fury, easily Zulang's best accessories. So now the final question of today's video is really simple. Is Zulang still a good commander? And I think the answer is just a yes. I mean, you can't go wrong with a Zulang nowadays. I don't think he's going to really lose value anytime soon. And commanders even like YSG are just a good example of this. YSG was released, who knows, probably before I was born. And he's still a very strong commander. Still a commander I use till this day. And he's only just starting to kind of fall out of the meta now. And I think Zulang is going to be kind of like that YSG. Even if you invest in him now, he's probably still going to get two to three years of value. And then even once he's not a good open field commander, he's got other uses like AoE barb farming and things that you can just do with him on your account. So he's never going to be a real bad commander. I'd say he's always going to have some form of value. And you won't go wrong with investing in him at least right now. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking about should I invest in him, the answer is just going to be a yes for almost everybody. There's almost no reason to not invest in Azul Lang because he's just such a strong commander 
who's overall going to get pretty decent kills on the open field, pretty decent trades, and his kit is going to be fairly relevant for quite some time, with the only thing that could be replaced really is some of his stats on his active skill, and maybe some stats throughout his kit. But even if a stronger version releases, Zulang is just so overpowered right now that, that he would just remain as a fairly dominant commander for quite a while, even if there was a Zulang Prime, for example. So overall, Zulang is just a really good investment, and if you do want to use him right now, he's strong in the open field, is a great investment, and he can be relatively cheap if you go 5551, five, but his expertise is worth it. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, I just want to say that please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really does support me, and it allows me to do dumb things like run my Zulang into somebody's Shadow Legion. So if you did enjoy today's video, consider subscribing. It's always very much appreciated. It allows me to continue making videos like this, and it's very supportive of the channel. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more Archer content since I upload guides for every single commander, then trust me, subscribing is a great way to get some great Archer videos with some of the best advice you'll find. So consider subscribing, it's very much appreciated, it supports me as a creator, and to everybody who's currently subscribed, a massive thank you, and to all the people who just subscribed as well, a huge thank you to you too. Now I just want to say I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.